How to be a master listing agent, that's what we're talking about today. Joining me for the conversation is the one and only, the business coach, marketing guru to the top realtors, Orlando Montiel. Orlando, how are you? Man, you're doing good, man. I, I like that introduction. Wow. That's uh, from our first introduction to this one. It's very impressive. We, we've, you know, come, it's a, we've come a bit of a long yeah, way, yeah, right? Yeah, you're very fluent in your introduction. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. So, Orlando, welcome back to another installment of the Miami Real Estate Podcast yes. and for Thank welcoming you. us into your lovely um, office is your studios here mm -hmm. we're excited so our first episode we talked about how to increase your sales by 100k in six mm -hmm. months or less um, I think a lot of us found a lot of great insights there but today we're gonna talk about a very hot topic for realtors right you always hear uh, you got to be a listing agent to be successful right yep. so the big question today is why well very important uh, let me start with this and we didn't say this uh, behind cameras uh, in over 19 years in this business, I venture to say that I've never found a buyer that needed to buy, ever. Why? Why do you think buyers don't need to buy? Why is that? They always, they, they always have the option to rent mm -hmm. or stay, stay where they are sure. or to go to a hotel, mm -hmm. right? So buyers are opportunistic by nature. Okay. If they find something they like, something they can afford, and at a convenience uh, price, great, they'll buy it. If not, they have the option to stay in their home, rent, or stay in a hotel. Right. Right? Uh, however, sellers have the need. So buyers play with the market, right? Mm -hmm. Sellers, usually under $2 million, have a need to sell. Sellers under $2 million. Right. Okay. Uh, if, if you have more than $2, $3 million, it's, it's, yes, listen, I, I'll, right. keep it, I'll keep the condominium or the house closed. I'll move whatever. I'll buy the other one. And if they give me the price that I want, I'll sell. If no, I won't. Sure. Right? That simple. Right. I don't need the money. But under $2 million, uh, if the person is moving because they got married now and they need a bigger place, they can afford to have a second mortgage or they can qualify, right? Right. If they're moving because they're downsizing because now the kids uh, are you know, going to school, mm -hmm. they need smaller place or they need to move closer to their office or they have a transfer from a company to another company, they need to sell. Mm -hmm. Got it? So we, need, we have people that actually need to sell mm -hmm. their property and you're working with people that are qualified, that, are, that really have to. Right. Understood. There's a, there's a sense of, there's a need and probably an urgency. Exactly. Right? All right. With most sellers under $2 million. Mm -hmm. So regardless of the market, you have business. Right. When the properties are going down in price, you have fewer buyers. But whether the market is going up or down, you will still will find sellers that need to sell. Okay. Not only that, that's number one, which is not, maybe not, not even the, the number one priority. Number, number one to me, it's you see the top, top, top agents or listing agents because it gives you leverage. How so? Okay, so we're here in Coral Gables, right? For yep. those of you familiar with Miami, uh, it's right like in the middle of the city. You have Homestead, which is all the way down south, right? And Farm you have Miami. Aventura, which is a little bit north. Yep. So you tell me, if I have a buyer today, that needs to buy a property in Homestead. Mm -hmm. I have a second client that wants to buy here in the middle of the city, Coral Gables, and another one that needs to buy in Aventura. I have three leads, very hot leads, qualified people that want to buy, one in Homestead, mm -hmm. one in Coral Gables, and one in Aventura. Today, I have those three clients today. Can I actually work with the three of them today? Well, Physically, probably not, right? Most, exactly. Okay. This is yeah. what I love about our <laughs> interviews is I, I end up getting put in the hot seat. <laughs> right, right. I can't serve those three, three sure. clients. I, I just can't. I, yeah. you know, time wise, it's impossible. Unless you have a team or yeah, you're unless, at a, right? But, yeah, but my, I can't. You yourself. I, remember, it's leverage, right? Leverage, yeah. So, can I have 30, 40, 50, 60 listings at a time? Mm -hmm. Of course I can. And we have many agents that we coach that have that 30, 40, 50, 60 listings. Mm -hmm. Right, so you leverage yourself. That's number one. That's why you see those agents. How can they make you know 150, 200 million dollars in sales in a year because they're working with sellers? I'm not saying to forget about buyers. Right. Don't forget about buyers, but focus on sellers. Eventually, your buyers will become your sellers. Mm -hmm. Got it? Number three, very, very, very important. It gives you free advertising. How so? Okay, so. I might have 
30 sales this year. I had an amazing year working with sellers. I sold 30 properties. Who finds out about that? Through your friends and family, maybe? Maybe, right? But if I have 20 listings in, in here in North Gables, in this community, mm -hmm. who finds out about that? Well, everybody that drives by and sees You got them. it. Exactly. So I have free advertising 24-7 to the target audience, which is my people in my community. Yep. Right? So it's free. You know how much money it would cost to have a for sale sign with my name, with my phone number, with my information 24-7 in my community, in my target audience? I mean, it's a lot of money. Yeah. So that gives me free advertising. Right, right, right. right. So I, I like that. So what do I need to do? To, uh, to become a listing agent. Ooh, very good. So we're going into question number two now. <laughs> <laughs> so once I understand that I need to become a listing agent, now the question is, okay, what do I do? First and foremost, we need to identify an area. So pay very close attention to this. We need to identify an area of at least 80 to 90 properties sold mm -hmm. within the last 12 months. Okay. Now we're going very technical. All right? Sure. You need to identify an area, ideally from where you live, mm -hmm. right? Not a different area, where there were at least 80 to 90 properties sold within the last 12 months. So are you, I know you're talking about turnover, right? But when you say right. an area where you live, are you, are you suggesting that you farm where you live, not another area? Exactly. Okay. The reason being is that I live here in Coral Gables. Sure. Where's my office? Coral Gables. Where do you think my kids go to school? Coral Gables. What do you think uh, I play tennis? Coral Gables. What do you think is my church? Coral Gables and Methodist. <laughs> what do you think I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, dinner almost every day? Uh, uh, the Biltmore. <laughs> yes, right here in, the, in Coral Gables, right? Yeah. When I'm in, in the boat, what do I through? What, what you know? Which uh, canal I use to go to the bay? The Coral Gables canal. Yeah. yeah. The waterways. Yep. So if I wanted to become a listing agent and you want to compete with me, you better live in, Cor live in Coral Gables. Sure. Because by default, I know exactly what's happening so in the area. So this makes sense and there's a, I, I see the value to uh -huh. that, right? But what do you, the sidebar, what do you say to the agent that lives in an area that maybe there's a low turnover rate or there's too much competition? Oh, I like those two. So let's say, in this, this is North Gables uh -huh. where, my, where my office is, right? So I find within you know a, a one mile radio, there is only 45. All I need to do is expand that area from where I live until okay. I get to 80 to 90 prop 80 to 90 properties sold. Okay. Right. Very very important. Sure. I just keep expanding until I get 80 to 90 properties sold. Right. If this area is very very slow, mm -hmm. right, there is not enough turnover. Okay, I, I can move a little bit north, a little bit south, but less than a mile. Okay. Again, the reason being is that, that by default, I know my area. Mm -hmm. If you tell me- Yeah, you're you know, the expert. Yeah, I go to Aventura almost every week to train companies, and I always need to know, okay, do I get off at Iris Derry, Miami Gardens? I, I don't know. And mm -hmm. if you tell me in Aventura, let's meet at the Starbucks. Where's the Starbucks? Yep. So immediately, my potential seller identifies this guy has no clue what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. I can make you fall in love with Coral Gables because I know everything that is happening around it, not even because I, I'm paying attention. It's because I'm driving around, I'm having breakfast, lunch, dinner, I'm taking my kids to school, right. I'm playing tennis around, so I know what's happening here. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for me to create that relationship yep. with that potential seller. Okay. Now, the second question you had was, okay, but there's a lot of competition. competition. If you find an area where there is not enough competition, not enough top agents, get out of that area. Okay. I'm serious. Yep. Because people think if if that area doesn't have enough good agents, that area is not active enough. Okay. You are always going to find competition regardless of where you go if that area is active. Right. Always. But here's a beautiful thing. Most people say, "Well, but these two, three, eight, top three agents are in my area. How am I going to compete with them?" You won't. You don't need to. Those people are closing 80, 90 properties a year. You don't need to close 80, 90 properties a year. If you're becoming a listing agent, having one extra listing a quarter, one extra listing a month is an amazing business for you. It's a business that you didn't have before. Right. So you don't need to become that top agent the first year. By the way, that, that top agent started exactly where you were with no listings. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. Yeah. All right. So the number one thing you need to do in order to become a listing agent is to identify an area within the area where you live yep. of 80 to 90 properties sold within the last 12 months. Okay, okay. so then um, once, you, uh, once you do that, then what's next? Where, where, where are we going from there? Okay, good. So I need three things, right? 
I need to start positioning myself as the expert of choice in that area. Mm -hmm. And that's done through frequency and consistency, meaning marketing. Okay. Right? Most agents think when they get their license, they say, now I'm a real estate what? Agent, mm -hmm. right? When in fact they are what? Secret, Secret. agents, right? <laughs> Nobody knows they are real estate agents, yeah. right? So I need to make sure that I start positioning myself as the expert of choice in my chosen area. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very important. And that's done through marketing, right? right? I need to make sure that I have enough content, mm -hmm. right? The five mistakes owners in downtown Miami make when selling their home what to do if you haven't sold your property in downtown Miami in the last 90 days. The three things you need to know before selling in downtown Miami, right? Mm -hmm. So that's content, relevant content that is going to compel that potential seller to pay attention to me. It's right. all about marketing, Yep. all right? Because we've said it before, the typical advertising piece that the agent has is all focused on them, right? I get a postcard and what do, that postcard has four things, right? Number one, my beautiful picture yep. from 73 years ago, right? Yep. Right. Number two, my listing or my, my recently sold. Number three, my name, my phone number, and what's the call to action? Call, call me. me. I'm number one. Yep. And we know that doesn't usually work, mm -hmm. works, right? So what we need to do is, instead of centering our marketing message in ourselves, we wanna center our message on the client, on their needs. Mm -hmm. Marketing is a process of four steps. Okay. Homer. And you know a lot about yeah. marketing. That's, you know, it's part of your business, right? And I don't know if you, I've talked to you about before, you know, this very old marketing concept called AIDA, right? I don't think we've AIDA. talked about okay. it. Okay, so, so this is more than 100 years old. Okay. Google it. Go to, and you'll see Wikipedia has like, like 10, 12, re, uh, you know, resources, uh, uh, research based so how, on. How do you spell uh, that? A, A, A uh -huh. I, D, A. Okay. All right. And stands for number one. We're talking about marketing. Sure. This is a marketing principle more than 100 years old. Mm -hmm. The A stands for what? For attention. Mm -hmm. Right. So I need to get your attention. Your attention. Right. Yeah. By putting my picture from 73 years ago, I'm not going to get your attention. By saying I'm number one, most likely I'm not going to get your attention. There were some people laughing here in the, in the studio. I'm not going to get your attention, right? So I need to get your attention. Stop, do not sell your home in downtown Miami before reading this report. The three things you need, oh, you see, I just see your face now? Okay, okay, now, now I got your attention, right? All right? Right. Now I got your attention. But that's the first step. Mm -hmm. Now I need to move you into what? The I. In interest. There you go. Interest. Very good. All I've right. Done this before. <laughs> you see? <laughs> now I need to get your interest. Sure. Right. And that's done through a sequence mm -hmm. of email marketing campaigns. Okay. Got it? Yep. Because remember that buying, selling, it's not an event. It's a process. Right. And everything that you buy. Even the one dollar water on the gas in the gas station, mm -hmm. you've been through that four step process. You right. don't buy a bottle of water that you don't know the brand. Right, right. True right. or false? Gum, gum. It's one sixty nine. Mm -hmm. You still buy the gum that you recognize, the brand, right? right? So I need to move you into interest, mm -hmm. and that's done through a series of email marketing sequences. Okay. That that's a basic one. Of course, you can do postcards, you can do magazines, newspapers, Facebook campaigns, right. a lot of things. But starts with email marketing, right? Right. Then through that same sequence, I'm developing what? The D. Is that decision? Desire. Desire. Right, okay? okay. Now you desire to at least contact me and find out exactly how I can help you. Mm -hmm. Because principle number one of what we teach agents is that it's much easier for people to do business with you. If they find you. Got it. See, we've worked I've together. Ah, yeah. You see, you see. So my job is to create an environment where you want to reach out to me. Mm -hmm. And the way I do that is not by talking about myself, it's by giving you relevant content to you. Right. It's All right? interesting and a value and... Exactly. Yep. All right? So I move you into desire and finally you what? You take action and mm -hmm. you contact me. Mm -hmm. All right? And even if I have to contact you, I've seen through the series of emails that you open some of those emails or, you know, you, I, I've seen you before, so it's not a cold call. Mm -hmm. Got it? Right. So that's the process of marketing, starting positioning ourselves as the expert of choice. Right. Uh, I'm going to do something, I'm going to say something publicly here that some companies don't like to do, 
but but it's a, a very good competitive advantage. Okay. All right. In order to become a listing agent, I don't like to compete. I like to dominate. <laughs> All right. Is that it? How many how many coaches you see in, in, in Miami? It's just and in Spanish nationwide. Right. Same thing in, in uh, for finances. It's just I don't like competition. I like it, it's very difficult to compete when right. you dominate. That's it. You have the market for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I'm going into a new market. I'm going to discount my first two or three listings. Discount I, them, okay. Right. I, I want to get traction. Mm -hmm. right. I want to get traction. It's not about how much money I make in that listing. It's about how much free advertising. The, uh, advertising. I exactly. But when you say discount, do you mean you're discounting your commission? Yes. Or your, yeah, how okay. can I save you $6,000 in the sale of gotcha. your home? Gotcha, now I understand why you're you saying you're going you're gonna to give me that, something that, controversial. Well, that, that, yes, something because <laughs> most, most companies don't like to do that, and I yeah. understand. Right? I understand what you're I, saying. By the way, it's, that's not the only uh, strategy, but that is an strategy. But yeah, it People, makes sense. Wait, wait, listen, I can say, I'm you, Omar, I'm, I'm number you. one, right? <laughs> I'm the best. I can help you, but if I, I'm going to save you $10,000. All right, I don't know. You're yeah. talking. Now no, you got my attention. I'm picking up what you're laying down. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, now, now I'm interested in what you're going to say, right? Sure. Again, that's not the only one. It's, it's a very radical mm -hmm. uh, strategy, but it gets a lot of momentum. Okay. All right? That, if that's possible with your company, great. If not, when we, we have other, other ways of doing it. Sure. Understanding that, again, selling is not an event. It's a process. Right. All right? So we need to make sure that we have enough frequency and consistency mm -hmm. that at the beginning, becoming a listing agent is the, the, the most difficult part. Right. But the more you're in front of your clients, the more you put yourself in a position to win, the easier it's going to get. Mm -hmm. The first listing, okay, yeah. is, is the most difficult one. Right. Once you get the first one, all the rest of are, right? are, are, are gonna be much easier. Yeah. All right. And, and I have agents that have 40, 50 listings in an area, and their presentation is, okay, these are my listings. So, okay, I, I, and I don't know if I'm jumping ahead <laughs> go here. Ahead, but, go ahead, go ahead. But um, now I'm excited. You mm -hmm. know, you got me going and the hot chocolate's kicking mm -hmm. in. So, um, let's say you, sugar. <laughs> uh -huh. I decided I want to be a listing agent, right? right? Um, I, I know how um, to do it and where I'm going to do it, right? And despite the competition, uh, I do my marketing. I got a call. Hey, Omar, I'm interested, you know, in your services. I'm listing my home. Come give me a pitch. How, what do I do now? How, how do I, you know... How do I get, how do I convince that first um, seller to give me their listing? Good. So that's now it's getting to selling uh -huh. mode. Completely right. different skill of what we were talking about before. Marketing. So, thank you, oh man. There you go. <laughs> Very good. So, remember, what's the difference between marketing and selling? And we're going to talk about selling now. Sure. Marketing is everything we do mm. as a company, as an agent, as a right. broker out there online and offline to get that potential client on the phone or face to face. Mm -hmm. right? That's a very specific set of skills. Right. Selling is what we do once we have that potential client on the phone or face to face. Mm -hmm. Got it? So your question was, yep. okay, what do I do now that I have that person? So first and foremost, I need to learn how to pre-qualify. If you don't learn anything else, learn to pre-qualify. Okay. It's going to save you a lot of time, how is that done? a lot of money and frustration. All right? Time, so, money, frustration. Hey, I like it. What happens is that new agents, since they don't, two things, they don't know how to pre-qualify. Now we're in selling mode, right? Mm -hmm. So how, how, do, how do I get that listing? First and foremost, I need to learn how to pre-qualify. Most agents don't pre-qualify. Number one, they don't know how to. Okay, they don't know what questions to ask. Right. But more important, once they know what questions to ask, what do you think happens? They don't ask them. Why? Because they're scared. That's it. Omar, there Boom. you go again, man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they're afraid, right? Right. right. They're afraid of asking, what is it that you want to do? Right? If you, buyers, for example, what, what do you want to buy? Where? Mm -hmm. Why? When? How much? All right. The same thing with a, with, a, with a seller, right? Sure. What is it that you want to accomplish? Where do you want to move to? Because the seller is moving somewhere. You can help them with the purchase of a property. Why is it exactly? Tell me why you want to sell. Well, I want to be closer to my office. That's not a, you know, a, a, a reason with enough you know, power Wait. to move you, right? Yeah. So t t tell me why is it that you want to move closer to the office? Well, you know, I'm driving an hour and a half each way every single day. All right, that, 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 that's, that's a reason, but 
but why do you want to save time? Some people love driving. My wife loves driving, for example. Some people love driving, and they have like their, their car, like like a university. They're learning their new language, new career, whatever. They're listening to the Miami Real Estate the, Podcast. You, uh, <laughs> seriously, they're listening to the Miami Real Estate Podcast, right? right. Or oh, the Miami Real Estate Show. Yeah, our <laughs> right. sister show. Here. <laughs> right. that, that, they're listening to both. Yeah, because they have three they hours. Have an hour. <laughs> <laughs> there you, go. you see, but it's, but it's true, yeah. man. Now, let, let me make a, a, a little break on that, and then we'll follow yeah. we'll continue on that. Now, that's what I say to agents. With technology, you don't even need a minute to study. Mm -hmm. By the time, in my case, you're shaving, you're getting dressed, women, they're putting makeup, getting dressed, and getting to their car, they yeah. have at least 45 minutes to an hour every single day of lead time for them to listen to the Miami Real Estate Show, to listen to the, to, you know, the podcast, to listen to courses. There's right. no excuses anymore. The, yeah. the, I don't have time. It's not an excuse anymore. Right. Right. So, why is it exactly that you? So, so you told me you want to move closer to the office. You told me because you're driving three hours in total every day. But why is it important for you to drive fewer hours, man? Because I get home, I'm so tired. Okay. Why is it important for you to get home and not be tired? Oh, because I have a wife and two kids, and I want to spend more quality time with them. Bingo. That's the emotional reason you want to move. I want to go deeper and deeper and deeper on the why. Mm -hmm. Once I get the why, I know how to sell you. Okay. Got it? I'm not going to sell you on the features, on the characteristics, on the appreciation of the market, on the economy. I'm going to sell you what is the need for you. Mm -hmm. All right? To, to spend more quality time exactly. with Exactly. I'm kids. asking you the why because I want, I want to know how to sell you for your own benefit. Mm -hmm. Got it? And how does knowing that then play into selling me for my So own now I go, I'm going to the fourth, which is the, the, the fourth question is, okay, tell me when. Okay. When do you need to move? Is it, is it the, next, the next 30 days, next six months? Because I need to know your urgency, right? Mm -hmm. And finally, tell me, how much are you planning to sell for? So you know mm -hmm. you're pre-qualifying that person. And that person says, well, I have about a, you know, a year because I'm not moving. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, uh, we're, we're comfortable where we are. I want to sell for $700,000 and you know they owe seven fifty. dollars You know, that person mm -hmm. uh, most likely can sell. So I need to pre-qualify that person So first. just walk me through those again because you mm -hmm. said the, the why was number four, I think. But I and, and it's the most important one. So number one is what is it exactly that you want to accomplish? Okay, got All it. Right? What is it? Okay, I want to sell my property. All right, perfect. I want to buy a property. Tell me how big, how many rooms. You know, is that a condo, townhouse, single family, mm -hmm. right? Then... The where, if you're buying, where? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to buy, mm -hmm. right? Because the seller is what? It's selling. It's selling, but yeah. it's, it's yeah. what? It's, it's also, move. it's, it's moving. moving. Yeah. Where, where are you so moving to? So where are you going to move to? Exactly, yeah. right? And how important is that move? Number three is the why. And then the why, I need to stay, and I need to go at least five to six levels deep. Mm -hmm. Meaning asking, you know, why, 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 right. why? Then the when is going when. to tell me how urgent that, that sale needs to occur. Mm -hmm. And finally, how much? Yeah. Right. And most agents don't ask those questions because they're afraid of the answer. Mm -hmm. But this is what we tell agents when we're training them. I rather you lose that client on the phone in the first conversation than losing that client four, five, six months later after you just put so much time, energy, and the most important thing, money. In, in, even more important, and money is important. Energy. Wait, you said that already. Emotion. Emotion. Yeah, because what I see with agents when we train them, when we do the seminars, is that nobody the, likes the, to lose that listing. Man, right? it's it, I, and the more the more energy, time, and money mm -hmm. you put into that listing, the more emotional attachment you have to that. Sure. And at the end of the day, we're doing this for what? For the emotional, you know, rush, benefit. the yeah. benefit. At the end, what do you want more money for? The emotional benefit, right? Well, because I want the car. What is the car? It's something emotional. What do you want the, the money for the vacation? What is that? Emotional uh, reason, right? Yeah. So what I see agents going through is, oh, I got a listing. And they get so excited. Yeah. I love your shoulders. Uh, uh, like, right. Now, and now, a month later, the listing <coughs> is not selling. And then you see them depressed. The right. So to me, the most important thing is to have my agents, the agents that we coach here is that that emotionally they are, they are mature, they are stable, they understand the process, and they go through the process so they have an effective transaction. Mm -hmm. So the pre-qualifying aspect is key. Okay. Because that's going to allow me to move into the second step. By the way, this, if you work for a bank, insurance company, pharmaceutical company, they will, this is selling one-on-one. -on -one. This okay. is the same steps. It's, sure. it's not invented by us, okay. right? It's just basic. There's no trademark yeah. on that. Yeah, it's not, there's no trademark on that. I'm like, man, you're blowing yeah. my Yo, mind Oh here. my God, well, Orlando, you see what he said? <laughs> go to a bank, go to an insurance company, and they will teach you exactly sure. the same, all right? 
So once I pre-qualify you and I realize that, yes, Omar, all right, it's pre-qualified. He has an urgency better than a need. He has the urgency to sell. He's within the price, you know, the price, the, the, the market price mm -hmm. of the property. Now I need to what? To follow up with you. Sure. Because usually you're not going to do business with me. Like that I, day. Exactly. All right. I need to do the follow up and I need to have the systems for follow up. Mm -hmm. All right. The phone call, the emails, the CRM, if you use CRMs. Mm -hmm. Then after the follow up, what am I looking for with the follow up? Which is a third step. The um, interest. The presentation. Yeah. Oh, the presentation. Right. Because right, right. I, 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 I talked to you on the phone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, right. hey, I'm, I'm available next Tuesday. Come right. on in. Got I, I want to I, I do the, the listing presentation with you. Yeah. Right. But before that, I need to. I don't want to go to a listing presentation Unless and find you know out in the I'm presentation qualified. that. Listen, man, I just bought the property for $300,000 three months ago. They pay me $500,000. That's good. If not, I'll keep it. You know, I, I'm not in a rush. <laughs> I just need a CRM for an hour and a half. I dropped to your house for 30 minutes. Now you're going to tell me you need $500,000? So I right. need to pre-qualify that person. I'd rather lose. So you're saying on, sorry to cut you off, good. on the phone, uh -huh. if, their price, if the price that they're intending to sell for is beyond what is uh, reasonable mm -hmm. or competitive, that... At that point, you're you're just you're saying no, never mind, or are you trying to um, understand if they would be willing to list it at the right price? Yeah, I, again, to me, the most important thing is that you list it at the right price. Because uh, you see a lot of times, again, like agents that like you talked about, they'll have it for six months or a year, dump all this time, money, energy, mm -hmm. and emotion in, yep. and then another realtor comes in and lists it at the proper price <laughs> and sells it in a month. Very good. So I think we talk about the uh, this saying in real estate that you want to be. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit. Uh, you know, it's strong, but, but you'll get the message with what you just said, right? In real estate, there's a saying that goes like this. You want to be the first child. Remember that one? Yeah. 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 You want to be the second what? Wife. Wife. <laughs> right. I love what we're doing with this. And then you want to be the third what? Agent. Okay. All right. Why? Right. Because usually the third agent is the one that sells the property, not because he's better than the second and the first one. It's because he got the property at the right price. Right. Got it? So, and in coaching... If you're new to coaching and you come to me and ask me, and, and people call, listen, I was referred by this person. He said, go to one of our seminars, right? Mm -hmm. Go watch the videos, do the research, and then we can have a conversation in a month, a month and a half. No, no, but I want to learn more. It doesn't really matter what I'll tell you today. You're yeah. going to want to think about it, right. right? And even if you sign for coaching immediately, then you're going to be confused. Go do the research, and then you come back to us, mm -hmm. all right? And I said to my salespeople the same thing. Do not force anybody because you're going to get in trouble with that person is going to cancel. Let them do the research and let them come to you. Remember, it's much easier for people to do business with you when they find, find you, you and when you find them. Right. So you don't want to get the listing immediately if it is overpriced. Because why? You're going to get a lot of stress. You're going to get a lot of complaints from your client, right? And you are not going to sell the property. There is not enough at amount of advertising that is going to sell a property, very important becoming a listing agent. Because this is, might be the most important thing, and, and I don't think anybody would argue with this, Omar. There is not a amount of marketing that will sell a property. And if you disagree with me, please write a, I would love to have a conversation with you, a discussion, it's, it's, it's nice. The only thing that sells a property the only thing that sells a property is the right price and the MLS. Okay. And people go like, what is this crazy guy saying? I'm going to demonstrate it for you because this might be the most important part of the whole interview. Mm -hmm. I have this property uh, listed in Miami Beach, right? In this beautiful condominium, two two nine hundred thousand dollars and mid beach, let's say, all right? and you are from New York, you have $900,000 budget, you want to buy a 2-2 condominium facing the water in Mid Beach. Excellent. And you're in New York, you go to the AFK, right? The, 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 uh, the airport. You buy the New York Times, Washington Post, Forbes Magazine, uh, Fortune Magazine, and every time you open one of those publications in the inside cover, you have a full color page advertising what you think. Your listing. My listing, two two nine hundred thousand dollars mid beach ocean front, and you say, "Wow, this is exactly what I want." And then you get in first class American Airlines. You open American Way. 
open the magazine. What do you see in the inside cover? Your listing. My listing again. What? This is exactly what I want. And I'm going to Miami only to buy a property in that range with those qualities. Excellent. You land in MIA, Miami International Airport. You get the Miami Herald. Miami Herald front page is a postcard st sticker that has what? Your listing. My listing. Right? You tell the driver, take me right now to Miami Beach. I want to see that property. You're leaving the airport and you see a huge billboard that says open 24-7. Right? What? Your listing. My listing. This you is going to be an expensive uh, <laughs> marketing effort, by the way. Exactly. I'm spending <laughs> millions of dollars on the market to sell this property, right? You get to my listing and actually you like it. Yeah. You haven't seen any other property, but you like my property. Are you going to put an offer on my property without looking at other properties? Yes or no? Probably not. Probably not. Of course not. So you're going to call a buyer's agent and you're going to tell that agent, listen, I want to see comparable properties. I'm in the range of $900,000 to two mid beach oceanfront. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, what is that buyer agent is going to do? Go into the MLS, look for comparable properties, show them to you, and then what you're going to base your decision based, based on what you saw. Right. So no amount of marketing is going to sell your property. So pricing the property correctly, it's what's going to sell it. And that's the most difficult job of a real estate agent. Convincing, edu actually it's not convincing, educating the client on the right right price. That's why the third one got the right price because he right. saw that the first one couldn't sell it for the price he wanted and the second either. So now by the third, he understands the he's market. He's ready for it. And he's ready for it. So if you could educate them <laughs> and save them the time that it would take to go through that mm -hmm. on the first go around, mm -hmm. uh, that would probably be an ideal situation for yes. you as a master yes. listing agent. Yeah. And that's what we teach agents. You need to have a conversation with your client once a week. Mm -hmm. And that client, go, uh, this conversation goes like this. Let's say you are the, the, the seller, Omar. All I need from you is the commitment that on Monday at 9 a.m. we are going to go for five minutes over the weekly market report in your building. That's it. All I need is five minutes from you. Can you commit to that? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? It's five minutes. Sure. Right? Who's going to benefit from that? Me, definitely, if we sell it. And of course, who? You. You. Me. So all I need from you, I'm going to send you Sunday uh, night or Friday afternoon, I'm going to send you the weekly report. How many properties are for sale in your community, the average price, average price per square foot, based on the market, highest for sale and lowest for sale. And we're going to review that information on Monday. It doesn't take more than five minutes. And then we're going to base our pricing decision on what we review from that week. Got it? That's all we need. So what am I doing? I'm educating you on the market. Right. So you know that even if you know I do all the marketing in the world, all right, I can't sell a dollar for the price of two. I just can't. Sure. And you did your homework. I, I you did my homework. So every week, every week, every, and you, you know, you're a smart person. You know that what I'm giving you is, is you know, it's the market statistics. Right. You know that I can sell that property, all right, for more than what the market is asking for, but I'm giving you the market numbers. Mm -hmm. And that's what most agents fail to do because they're afraid to talk to the seller and tell them the truth. Wow. Right? So you're listening right? to the Miami Real Estate <laughs> Podcast here with the man, the myth, the legend, Orlando Montiel, marketing guru, business coach, and well, just all around awesome Thank guy. You, man. Thank you. Orlando, we're running out of time yes. here. Any other um, key points or main takeaways on this topic that uh, in, in the sense of becoming a master listing agent, what, what do you sure. have for us? And I love that what we talk about the closing. So we go through the pre-qualification process. So I decide whether I want to do a follow-up or not. If that person is qualified, I follow up. And what I'm looking on the follow-up is what? Make a listing presentation. Mm -hmm. The listing presentation should not be literally more than five to seven minutes. Okay. Very, very, very short. Got that right? five to seven minutes. And people talked about themselves, or their history, the experience, the company. <laughs> That's relevant later if the client asks for your experience, for your company, etc. Don't go talk about yourself. The client don't have that much attention span. Right. Right? Go to the point. Presentation, five to seven minutes, and you want to jump immediately, immediately into the what? The pricing? Objections. Objections. Which pricing okay. is number one. There are only eight objections. And that's truly when you demonstrate your client how good you are and how good of an asset you are to sell their property. So walk me through some of these. Very good. There are only eight objections. Okay. That's it. If you're working with sellers, there are only eight objections. No more than that. Sure. So review those objections and think about all the objections you've gotten from your sellers and it's going to fall in one of these. Number okay. one is what? What you said is? Pricing. Pricing. Yep. All right. My property that I bought for $50,000 last week and I put pink carpet on it, now I want to sell it for half a million dollars. Number two is what? It's similar to pricing money, but it's the? 
commission. Okay. Right? So the commission, why are you charging 6% Omar? I have this friend that is charging 4.5 or 4%. Number three is comparison. Omar, I love what you said, man. I, I, I mean, this presentation was amazing, but I want to interview other agents. What do you say to that? What do you say to that? Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll go into it. Yeah, we'll, okay, we'll, we'll finish with that saying. one if you want. I'm just giving you the objections because I know we're I running, out of ta running out of time. So that's number three, comparison. Number mm -hmm. four, it's authority. So it's that we are failing to pre-qualify the person and I can, you know, you can give me all the great things you're going to do for me, but Omar, I need to talk to my wife. <laughs> and my wife is not here. So it's a great escape way, right? Because uh -huh. it doesn't really matter what you say. I can't sign this document because my wife and I own this property. So we both have to authorize the listing agreement. Mm -hmm. Got it? So that's number four, authority. Number five is what we call a escape technique. Excellent, man. I love everything you said. Let me think about it and I'll get back to you. What, what do you say to that? Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, guess, I guess so. I can't kidnap okay, you, right? right? So that's number five. Uh -huh. number, six, number six is no need. Listen, I bought it for $50,000 last month. As I said to you, I paid for it. It's clear and clear. Free and clear. It's rented. It's giving me a positive cash flow of 6%. If they give me half a million, great. If not, I won't. And there are a lot of people that don't need to sell, but I need to identify that immediately. Mm -hmm. after, not after two hours of a presentation. Sure. Right? The number seven is satisfied. Listen, Omar, I don't need a real estate agent. I'm satisfied with what I'm doing. I have it in the flat fee MLS, right? I have a for sale sign in the, in the, in the, in the house. I have it advertised in Craigslist, the newspaper, whatever. So I'm satisfied. I really, I really don't need a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And the last one is compromise. Omar, I'm willing to work with you and I'll pay you the commission. So bring me the buyer and I'll pay you the commission. But I don't want to sign any listing agreement. Those are the eight objections. Now we can have another session, you know, it's going through all yeah, well, the I was objections. About to say, that's, <laughs> right? That's part two. That's, that's part two. I mean, it's it's because I'm giving you the information yeah. today. But remember, information, we don't make any money with information. Mm -hmm. We need to convert that information into skills. Right. And the only way we do that is through repetition. Sure. Over and over and over and over again. All right. So I just give you a, a little bit of information, but at the end of the day, it's repeating that information. So then I think definitely for our next session, okay. <laughs> we're going to go through the eight. Okay. And what I'm going to invite our, our listeners and viewers to do is to send in their questions um, that they have for you from oh, personal experiences or maybe things that they're wondering about as it relates specifically to being a listing agent and overcoming these objectives. But to take us out, mm -hmm. I want to give them a preview. Mm -hmm. So to walk me through the, the I think it was number three. It's mm -hmm. like you did, you did awesome. This was the best presentation <laughs> ever. I'll let you know. Excellent. No, okay. so, yeah, yeah, I want to compare you to other agents, right? Okay, like, which, is, which is why you said that, okay, how do we do that? Very simple. So I understand that most likely you're talking to other agents. Mm -hmm. So I need to put myself in a position to win and I need to put my competition in a position to lose. Okay. You're telling, you're going to tell me that as <laughs> yeah, a seller. Right. No, 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 I'm not. No, okay. no, no. Okay. So I, was like, I like this guy. He's a, <laughs> no, no, a shark. No, no. So, no. so let's say right here, this is what, so you are now let's, let's role play. Yeah, now I'm the play. agent. Okay. okay? I'm and just, you'll tell I'm me, listen, because what I, I saw your, 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 your eyes, you know, light on. Okay. Tell me, how do I do that? How do I eliminate the competition? Well, Simple. I didn't say it was easy, but it's, it's a very simple process. Omar, I completely understand that you want to, I, I first want to reaffirm your need, which is, is, is 100% valid. I don't want to go against you. By the way, if I were the seller, I would want to interview other agents too. And I, and I, and I, and I let you know that. Omar, I completely understand that you want to interview other agents. Sure. And as a matter of fact, if I were you, if I were in your position, I would want to interview other agents. Because you want to find what? The most prepared Agent. agent to yeah. sell your home, right? But in order to find that agent, who needs to be prepared first? You. you. Exactly. To find that agent. So if you don't know, if you're not prepared to find that agent, how do you find that person? So I'm going to give you the guidelines. Very simple. Here it is. Right here, there is a sheet with 12 questions. Okay. Uh, as you can see, question number one, you need to ask that agent to see if that agent is prepared. You need to ask that agent. Number one, how many properties are for sale right now, right here in my building? Mm -hmm. One bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom. How many properties? All right. Okay. Average price, number sure. two. Average price per square foot, days on the market, highest for sale and lowest for sale. Wow. Right? <laughs> and the same information for the properties that sold within the last six months. Now, here's a paper. I'm going to give you the answer now. 
Omar, two two like yours in this building for sale right now. There are twenty six properties. The average price is four hundred seventy eight thousand dollars. The average price per square foot is three hundred ninety two dollars. The highest for sale is on the forty second floor. Which what am I doing? I'm demonstrating you, demonstrating you mm -hmm. that I know what I'm talking about. Right. What do you think it's going to happen when you the, or the seller as the next agent? Tell me how many properties are for sale in yeah, the building. Well, uh, maybe uh, you know. And, and, and yeah, about. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's. Well, there's not about. Tell me exactly how many properties are for sale. If you're going, if, if a doctor is going to perform surgery on you, and you tell the doctor, "Hey, doctor, are you ready?" Uh, kind of uh, about. It's not about. It is. It's yes or no. I think it's I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm ready. It's uh, about twenty. Yeah. No. It's. It's yes or no. Right. So by, by going through this process, I'm not only saying that I'm the expert that I say I am in my area, but I'm showing you. Mm -hmm. And I'm automatically eliminating, unless you're trained by us, <laughs> right. eliminating 99.9% .9 of the competition that is focused on themselves, right? Look what I sold, look at my company, look right. at my marketing, look. What do you know about my building? Listen, if you don't know how many properties are for sale in my building, how are you gonna sell my property? Sure. Got it. So that's, that can be a follow up for the next uh, I like next it. Session. Well, this is awesome. Orlando, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed. Omar, it's always a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you. All right.